In this video, we are going to check the previous year TCS Ninja numerical ability questions. As we know, TCS is planning to hire 2023 batch students through on-campus placements for both Ninja and Digital role. This video will help you to prepare for that. You can also join our live TCS training, which will help you to clear TCS integrated test pattern in which we will be covering out all the previous year questions for both foundation and advanced sections. You can also join our social media platforms like Telegram group, Instagram page and WhatsApp group. We constantly give updates on placement preparations and off campus placements. Link for all of those are in the description box. So before we start, do not forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and press the bell icon for instant notifications about our videos. We will start now. Find the value of. So we need to identify the value of the particular expression. Root of 96 plus root of 54 minus root of 150 plus root of 24 divided by root of 48 minus root of 192 plus root of 75. If you clearly observe, none of these numbers is having a direct root. That means for suppose if I read, uh, say root of 16, it's 4. It's a direct root, but 94 or 54 or 150 or 24, none of these numbers is having a direct root. So we need to write them maybe in an indirect format. Some number can be out and some number can be inside the root itself. For suppose if I take 96 here, root of 96, how can I split 96? The possibilities of splitting 96 may be 96 if I divide it. It can be 16 into 6. Why am I writing as 16? For suppose 96 is there. If I divide it with 8, it is going to give me 8 into 12. 96 can also be written as 8 into 12. But if I write it as 8 into 12, th there is no root for 8 and there is no root for 12. Again, I need to split it. Root of 8 into 12 is nothing but 4 into 3 or 12 is nothing but 6 into 2. Now again, 8 into 2 is 16. 16 into 6, there is root for 16. Okay, that is the reason I'm writing it in the format of root of 16 into 6. You can even consider 8 into 12, but you cannot directly write it. Again, you need to split it. So if I consider it as root of 16, in, uh, 16 into 6, that is the only possibility. Other than that, we cannot split it anymore. 6, there is no root. Even if I write 6 as 2 into 3 also, there is no number that is going to form the root directly. So root of 16, if it comes outside, that is 4 and root 6. So root of 96 can also be written as 4 root 6. So instead of this, let me write it as 4 root 6 plus. Now, one thing you need to observe if your options are root 3, root 6, 0, 4 root 12, uh, 4 root 2 like this. That means the denominator is getting cancelled because there is denominator here. So most probably the root has been written in the same term. For suppose root 6 is there. If I have denominator also root 6, that might get cancelled. I'm not saying exactly root 6, but most probably because there is root here. That is the reason we are thinking maybe most probably one thing should be in common. So as we wrote 96 in the form of root 6, let us check remaining also maybe in the form of root 6 itself. Now 54 is there. How can I write 54? 54 is nothing but root of 54 can be written as root of 9 into 6. Root of 9. Yes, that is a direct root. So I can write it as 3 root 6. So let us write 3 root 6 minus 150. How can we write 150? Uh, 25 into 6 is 150. 25 into 6 is 150. So 150 can be written as root of 25 into 6. Root of 25 it is 5 root 6 plus 24. How can we write 24? 4 into 6. So what is root of 4? It is 2 root 6. So all the denom uh, numerators has been written in the form of root 6, root 6, root 6. Now let us check denominator. Maybe there is a possibility that we can also write the denominator in the form of root 6 itself. Now root of 48. But root of 48, if I want to write it in the form of 6, it can be written as 8 into 6. But there is no root that can be formed again for 8. So you cannot take it as 8. For suppose if I little split 6, it can be written as 2 into 3. And 8 into 2 is 16 into 3 I can take. Root of 48 I can write as 16 into 3. 
if i want to write it as root 6 there is no possibility but 16 into 3 is an option means i can write it as 4 root 3 maybe let us check because everything if it comes in the form of root 3 again root 3 can get cancelled okay so let's write so 48 i can write it as 4 root 3 Four root three minus one ninety two. Now I got one thing in the form of root three. So what I'll do? I'll try to check remaining also. How can I find form in the form of root three itself? So root of one ninety two. If I divide with three, that is going to be sixty four into three. One ninety two can be written as sixty four into three. That means it is eight root three. Sixty four means root of eight plus seventy five twenty five into three means five root three. So let us uh, write what exactly is the numerator and denominator. We get four plus three seven. Four root three plus three root three seven. Root three plus two root three nine. Root three nine minus uh, five is going to be four. So this overall numerator is four root six. Four plus three seven. Seven plus two nine. Nine minus five four. Divided by what is denominator? Four plus five nine. Nine minus eight root three. So it is going to be four. Into root six divided by root three, but I can write root six as four into root two into root three divided by root three, and this will get cancelled. So what's your answer? Four root two. Root two cannot be simplified anymore. It will be considered in the form of decimal, but your options are in the form of root two itself. So what's the answer? It is four root two. Option B is the correct one. Option D. So as much as we can reduce, we can reduce it, and then here six. And root three can be cancelled. Six can be written as root two into root three. So root three and root three will get cancelled. And what was left for root two? So the answer for this following expression, if I simplify this expression, it is four root two. Option D is the correct answer. It's a question from the concept of simplifications. Here is the next one from the concept of simple and compound interest. So basically, the formula for simple interest is equals to P T R divided by hundred, where P is the principal, T is the time period and rate of interest. So time period and rate of interest should be always in the form of year, or both should be in the form of month. And then the formula for compound interest is equals to P into one plus R by hundred whole to the power of n minus one, where P is the principal. R is rate of interest and n is the time period. You can even represent it in the form of t also here, or maybe here t n r also we can take n and t both represents time. Okay, minus one should definitely come for compound interest if I'm taking common like this. If I take overall bracket, minus one should be there. This is the formula. Now let us solve the question. Raj had a total of twenty four thousand rupees. He invested one third of his share at rate of twelve percent per annum, simple interest for two years. So he invested one third of the share. That means how much he invested? Twenty four thousand. One third of twenty four thousand was invested. One third of twenty four thousand means eight thousand. So the first case, he invested a principal of eight thousand. Under twelve percent per annum, and the time period he invested is two years, and this was simple interest. Under simple interest, he invested, and next he invested twenty percent of the remaining amount at the rate of ten percent per annum. Ah, uh, per annum compound interest for two years. So the remaining amount. So first twenty four thousand is there. In that one third, he already invested in simple interest, which is eight thousand. So in twenty four thousand, if eight thousand is uh, removed, then the amount left over will be sixteen thousand in this twenty percent. So in the second case, sixteen thousand, which is left over in the twenty percent, has been invested for compound interest. What is twenty percent? It is three thousand two hundred. Three thousand two hundred rupees for compound interest. The principal here is three thousand two hundred. And he invested at a rate of ten percent per annum, and the time period he is going to take here is three years, and it is a compound interest he invested three years. Now the deposited the remaining amount at fifteen percent. How much is remaining? Total twenty four thousand eight thousand is done here. Three thousand two hundred is done here. That means overall eleven thousand two hundred is done. From twenty four thousand eleven thousand two hundred is completed. Means the remaining amount will be twelve thousand eight hundred, or from six thousand. 
you can remove 3200 this was invested for 15% 15% per annum fixed deposit under compound interest so this is going to be 15% per annum and the time period is for 2 years he invested compoundly in a bank for 2 years but this was compound interest now our question find the interest that he will be received by him find the total interest we need to identify the total interest and we know the formulas also so just substitute the values in the formulas we have all simple interest pdr by 100 means simple interest year will be 8000 into 2 into 12 divided by 100 8000 into 2 in, uh, 2 into 12 divided by 100 all the values are mentioned here so let's just can cancel 24 into 80 will be 1000 920. So this is done. Now the next one. 3200 into 1 plus 10 by 100 whole cube minus 1. 1 plus 10 by 100 is nothing but a 110 by 100. 110 by 100 means 1.1. So this entire thing will be 1.1 cube. So that's 3200 into 1.1 cube as a 1.3. 3, 1 minus 1 means it is 3200 into 0 0.331, which is 1059.2. You will be having on screen calculator for TCS, so you can easily use it out. And here is also compound interest, so which is 12,815% means 1 plus 15 whole square minus 1. So 115 divided by 100, this is 1.15 into 1.15, which is 1.3225 minus 1, means it is 12,800 into 0.3225. So 12,800 into 0.3225 is going to give us 14,128 is the interest. So what is the overall interest? Addition of all of them here is 1,000. 1920 and here it is 1059.2 and here it is 14128. So if I add all of them, it is 7107.2. So the overall interest received by Raj at the end of all of the schemes is going to be 7107.2 rupees. Just needs to know the formula for simple and compound interest. Simple and compound interest is also a good topic that has been seen in TCS many times. So the answer option B. The expenditure of Rashmi is equal to 225% of her saving. If her income increases by 20%, the expenditure increases by 40%, then her savings will be. So here, this particular question, you can imagine variables because none of the values is mentioned. They did not give you how much is the income or expenditure. None of the values has been mentioned. So what we can do, we can imagine variables. Variables can be imagined or else you can even imagine some numbers also. So you can imagine the saving is so and so or the expenditure is so and so like that. So we will imagine here nothing. If none of the values has been mentioned, you can always imagine a particular value and take it as a reference to solve. So now we uh, the formula generally that comes between income and expenditure is the income will be equal to savings plus expenditure. How much ever you are uh, saving and whatever you are spent is nothing but the income. So now let's see. The expenditure of Rashmi is equal to 225% of her saving. So there are three terms that is coming into picture. One is expenditure, one is saving, and next is income. So now the expenditure of Rashmi is 225% of her saving. Means than saving, it was 225%. So you can imagine expenditure also, but it will become very easy if you imagine saving because than saving expenditure is more. So let me imagine saving is 100 rupees. You can imagine 200, 300, any value, but why 100 is just easy for calculation. That's it. So I will imagine saving is equals to 100 rupees. If saving is 100, then expenditure will be 225% of saving, means 225% of 100. What is 225% of 100? 225 rupees. So saving is 100, expenditure is 225. So the overall income, what is income saving plus expenditure? Means 325 rupees. 
325 rupees so the first this is the first scenario of her the general and the first scenario now if her income increases by 20% so generally this is her income now it is going to be increased by 20% so what was 25% is of 325 in 325 25% is 65 rupees that is going to be increased increased right means i need to add 325 plus 65 that is going to become 390 rupees the income before it was 325 now it is going to become 390 the expenditure is increased by 40% so her expenditure is increased by 40% here so what is 40% of 225 Ah, forty percent of two twenty five in two twenty five, forty percent is the increase overall. So that's ninety, which is two twenty five plus ninety means three nineteen. Now, what will happen to her saving? She is earning an income of three ninety, and she is spending three twenty ah three fifteen rupees. Three ninety income right now. At that time, expenditure is three fifteen rupees. Means what's her saving? Seventy five. so then what will happen to her saving in prayer in before it was 100 and right now it is 75 that means her savings is reduced and how much will be the reduction from 100 to 75 so on 175 means 25% is initially it was 100 means 75 minus 100 divided by 100 into 100 we are supposed to do So that's twenty five percent is decrease minus indicates it is decrease. So from hundred it became twenty five means her savings has been reduced to twenty five percent days. So decreased by twenty five percent days. So before it was hundred, right now it is seventy five. So twenty five percent days of reduction has been occurred. So what's the answer? Option A. You can do assumption. Assumption can be possible if the values are not mentioned. Then you can easily assume it, and then you can take that as reference to find out. So answer option A. Decreased by twenty five percent is. Now here comes the next. An electric shop. A item dealer can earn a profit of five percent even after allowing a discount of thirty percent. Thirty percent discount, even after thirty percent discount, he want to clear his old stock, so he offered a scheme of three successive discounts of twelve percent days. What could be the minimum profit percent days approximately? We need to identify what is the minimum profit percent days that he is going to receive. Approximately the minimum profit percentage. So let's start solving. Now here also one thing what I can do I can assume it and we can start solving because none of the values has been mentioned. How much is the cost to price or how much is the selling price or uh, whatever is the MRP is also not mentioned. So we can imagine it. So let us assume uh, the cost to price of the particular article is hundred rupees. the cost to price of the particular article is 100 rupees if i imagine cost to price is 100 rupees then they said there is a profit of 5 percentage that means how much should be the profit 5 percentage profit will always occurs upon cost to price that means 5 rupees so what should be the selling price it should be 1 out 5 rupees 1 out 5 rupees but it is not direct selling price they gave it discount of 30 percentage So there is something called MP mark price. How much have it is marked upon the article? From this, there is a reduction of thirty percent is, and then it will be the final selling price of the particular article. So now, if you want to identify how much is the mark price, one thing you need to do, you need to assume it as X from X thirty percent of X is subtracted. You should get one out five because we know the cost to price. So that you should do, or else what we can do? MP is always hundred percent. If I think MP is hundred percent, hundred minus thirty is how much? From hundred, thirty is reduced. So that's seventy percent. So seventy percent of MP should be equal to SP, which is one out five. One out five. Seventy percent of MP is equals to SP, which is one out five. Now, what will be the value of MP? If seventy percent means seventy divided by hundred is equals to one out five. That means the value of MP is going to become one fifty. If it get cancelled, seven one out five. If I divide with seven, it's fifteen, and ten will go that side. So one fifty. So this is also known for us. 
So CP is hundred, and if you mark it as one fifty, and he gave it thirty percent discount and sell for one or five rupees, thirty percent discount means on one fifty thirty percent is forty five itself. One fifty thirty percent is forty five. So if he gave it as a discount and then sell it, then he will receive a profit of five percent. Is this the scenario that is happening? Now what they said, uh, he wanted to clear his old stock, so. He offered a scheme of three successive discounts of twelve percentages. What would be the minimum profit uh, percentage? Approximately, we should find out. So, what is happening now? He is going to give three successive discounts. There is a previous case where he gave a direct discount of thirty percentages, and he got one uh, one out five as a selling price. But now, when he is going to uh, give three successive discounts, he will not be having one out five as a selling price. The selling price is going to change. When the selling price change, the profit will changes, and that's what they are asking us to calculate. Find the percentage of the profit. So now discount will be always given on MRP. So MRP will be one fifty. From one fifty, three successive discounts means what happens? From one fifty, first they will reduce twelve percentage of one fifty. Then whatever comes again, twelve percentage will be reduced. Again, twelve percentage will be reduced. That's called successive discounts means. And then finally, what comes? That is the selling price. So you need to reduce, keep on reducing twelve percent, twelve percent. Or else, what we can do simply from MP hundred percent. If it is twelve percent reduction, eighty eight should become SP, and again twelve percent. Like that, you can directly reduce. See, if I take my MRP, which is one fifty. So instead of doing this, always follow the shortcut. How many times it is reduced? The same procedure you need to follow. So first, from hundred, it is going to be twelve. Means hundred minus twelve eighty eight. Eighty eight percent you need to multiply, and again also twelve. So hundred minus twelve again eighty eight you should multiply, and again also twelve means eighty eight by hundred. If you do three times, that's going to directly give you the SP value. You will be having on screen calculator instead of each and every time reducing twelve twelve. You can easily do like this. So only one zero will get cancelled. Now just multiply it. Fifteen into eighty eight into you will be having the on screen calculator also. Divided by how many zeros we have, so it is going to give us approximately one or two point two two. That means that's your SP. One or two point two two rupees is your SP. So after giving twelve percentage three times, you will finally sell it for one or two point two two rupees. Okay, that means what is the profit? I already imagine his cost to price is hundred. Only his selling price is going to change. So SP is one or two now. Means how much is the percentage of profit? It's two rupees approximately. If I they also mention it as approximately this is one or two rupees. So cost to price is hundred. SP is one or two. So profit is always cost to price minus uh, selling price minus cost to price divided by cost to price into hundred means two percent days. So what's the profit that he percent days of profit that he is going to make right now? It is two percent days. Instead of reducing with twelve of one fifty and again twelve of the value that you got, you can directly take like this hundred minus that because discount is always reduction. That is the reason we will always do hundred minus hundred minus. Hope you understood the models that we has discussed. Thank you for watching the video and please do subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for more notifications from us. Thank you.